Everybody go attack. Oh, jeez. All right, good job. <laughs> All right, we are back in Kenshi with Azagami and crew. Now, when we last left the team, we were uh, getting underway with getting our homestead set up and settled in the desert and getting our team working on outputting all the things we'll need to be prosperous out here in the desert, which is what we have underway uh, so far. I've done a couple of things uh, off camera just to get us started. I've rearranged the squads a little bit. So we have a, uh, a smaller, leaner, lighter scout team uh, that is um, probably a team that's going to run away instead of stand and fight. But if they do have to fight, it's, you know, our guys with decent and stats. We've also set up an operations team, and these are the guys that are responsible for building and security. I installed a mod that lets us actually patrol and stand guard. We get these little guard posts, which is pretty cool. And these guys will, they'll eat and take care of themselves, but they'll also stand and uh, watch and make sure everything is okay. We are in the process of moving everything out of this building into this bigger building because uh, I was having an issue where it seemed like enemies were spawning either in or very close to inside of this building, which was a bit of a pain. It's, it's hard to deal with all the enemies inside of a building. So eventually we're going to dismantle that building. And even if that remains a uh, spawn point, so be it. Because one of the things that I did in setting up this base is, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to call it a mistake. I'll say it's a happy accident. Uh, we set up the base on a road, which we can see by going into the dev tools. And we'll select roads and we can see... I've got my base set up uh, right on a road that runs right through the center of the base. Which means not only am I getting, it seems it seems apparent that not only am I getting the characters that spawn that are intended just to come mess with me by collecting taxes or attack, we also have just the general travelers who were using this road uh, as part of the game. And so they were coming through and getting stuck on one side and perhaps even dismantling my walls. I don't know. It's a possibility. That was suggested in the comments. So I've done something that you're technically not supposed to do or the, you know, typically would not be advised by people who play Kenshi, which is I have two gates now, which means I have two points for enemies to come attack me. However, these gates are going to remain open. Not only do I not really care about getting attacked. I mean, we'll see. I may eat those words, but what's happened thus far is the team has kind of been able to deal with those who have come to attack us. And yeah, we're taking the lumps, we're taking the bruises, but they are healing, they're getting back up, the squads aren't getting wiped. It just is interrupting our production, which I don't really mind because the production stuff is kind of fiddly. It's messing with inventories and making sure people are efficiently working and then just kind of letting them do what they're doing. Um, so this way we have some action happening every once in a while and uh, our skills are going up. Everybody's getting some fighting experience, everybody's getting some healing experience and so on and so forth. So even with that, if there is an enemy spawn point inside of the base, all right, whatever, so be it. And the the longer term goal here and the reason for having, leaving this on the road and letting people come on in is that this, uh, whether I'm actually able to or it's just aesthetic, whatever, this will be the public market square where we will have market stalls. I don't know if it was a mod or it comes with the base game, but I can manufacture market stalls. I don't know if people will shop for them, from them, but if they do, awesome. If they don't, all right, whatever. At least it'll aesthetically look like that. But that means this will eventually, the various things that we have in here will migrate over to, I imagine, I'll, we'll see what happens when we get to it, but we'll probably build out this way. And when we build out this way, we'll likely do the typical stuff for defense, which is build the funnel system for the gate that'll lead people into a closed gate where we can fire on them with crossbows. But for now, we just have flat walls and gates and they run straight through, and I don't really have any intention on closing these gates. These are meant to be entrances and exits, but in closing it means that we can keep it free of people in recovery comas, and we can also dispose of the dead, because once it's enclosed, they get those couple of extra jobs for people that are on the floor. So, everybody's working, everybody's humming along, everybody's doing what they gotta do. I think what we're gonna do today is we are gonna send the scout team. Uh, we got a... Why don't we get you, Naganuma? Why don't you go pick up this outlaw swordsman captain? And we're gonna take this person in before they starve to death. Uh, they are dropping in hunger, and I have found that it seems if I drop meat right outside of the cage, I think they were eating it because the meat's disappearing, uh, but I don't wanna have to keep dealing with that. I was really hoping they would just feed themselves to the starving point. Maybe they will, maybe they wouldn't. I don't know. Actually, where we could see that. Where is he at? How starving are you? 59. Oh yeah, no. I think 99. I don't want to switch over to the enslaved. Yeah, 99. 99 is where you get held at if you're enslaved and you don't eat. 
It would be really nice if these guy if these cages kept anybody at 99. So he's slowly starving, so we're not gonna deal with that. We're gonna take him out to the United Cities, and we are going to turn him in. What? He doesn't have a he had a three thousand dollar Oh, I guess I let it expire. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> that was the plan. Okay. Well, that was the plan, and that'll be something I'll have to pay closer attention to next time. <laughs> um, is making sure their bounties don't expire. And also they don't starve to death. All right. So I guess what we'll do then, the other thing I wanted to do, we have, we're spending quite a bit of money just being here. We got our taxes that are due. We have um, the ninjas that are shaking us down, which we're going to keep paying for now because uh, while we do have bandits coming and we have starving vagrants coming and skimmers come through, uh, they're all in lower level uh, attack skills, whatever. Uh, so we haven't really had a problem dealing with them, but the ninjas that came to shake us down and extort us uh, for protection money and they have yet to show up to protect anything. Uh, so it clearly is extortion, but those guys were like level 45 to level 50 in their attack skills. Um, so I, I would imagine if I refuse to pay that bill, uh, rather than getting protection, I will be also getting attacked by ninjas, and we just don't need that right now. However, one of the other groups that was asking for money was the Traders Guild, and the guy that came to collect for the Traders Guild said, if you talk to somebody in the Traders Guild headquarters, I think it was, you can pay a one-time fee instead of paying a weekly fee and they won't, uh, come collect anymore. I would imagine that this is, since this is Kenshi, that it'll be somewhere between some kind of sort of truth, maybe not really, uh, or I'm literally about to send a team to get enslaved or imprisoned or something by some trick or other means. It's either going to be the bill is so extremely high I can't possibly pay it, it'll be like $200,000, or it's gonna be like, oh yes, just come this way and they'll lead us to a prison cell. But, I think, uh, that is what we'll do today. We'll send the scout team out to hang, and we'll see if we can talk to the people in the Traders Guild, I suppose. I was really intending on running in a bounty and making a little more money, but... All right. Well then, I'm a little apprehensive about leaving. I'm seeing this alarm raise, but it's gotta just... I'm, we're gonna check on the enslaved real quick. Before we go, we'll check on the enslaved and make sure that's what's happening, is that these guys are the ones who are causing all the problems. Here, why don't you go ahead block. will not you make, learn some blocking skills. One of these days we are gonna go save them, but they will, um, continue to build up their toughness in the meantime. I suppose enough dilly-dallying. I was, it's been a minute since we've gotten attacked. So I was hoping to see if something was gonna happen. We also have, uh, I think in the last episode, we, this probably happened during the episode, but, um, these hivers got, uh, enslaved by slave traders that also were attacking my gate. I think manhunters or perhaps slave traders. And, um, we unlocked all their shackles, or I did while I was getting things set up, but they won't leave. They made it this far and then they're just kind of stuck, so. <laughs> but people have been pushing past them and just coming through. Other caravans have come through, so. Mm, seems fine. Oh, there we go. Those guys must have food. Attack them. Alright, cool. Well, brace for the attack. See, I'm glad we waited a second. I mean, I suppose... It would be nice to see if the operations team can handle it on their own, but... You know what we maybe do? Why don't we send you guys... So we don't get... So we don't get, um... Labor interrupted. Let's see if we can attack you guys outside. Will you go? Nobody went. Nobody did anything. Everybody just stood around. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys. Come on. Beautiful. Oh, well, this might change our, our impromptu plans uh, as they were anyway. This might change them a bit, because we may put people to sleep before we head off to hang. We'll see. They're doing very well. My goodness. Beautiful. Now, I do have people set to throw out and incinerate, so we're not really getting a ton of opportunity to loot people, but also... I'm not even going to bother microing this because these are just starving vagrants, so I really don't give a crap. Uh, I don't think we're hurt enough. I mean, Hiramatsu's not wonderful, but we could sleep and hang if we have to. So, let's see. Yeah, you guys are fine. And you're all doing what you're supposed to do. People are already healed. I'm so happy about this. Yes, thank you, dog. Ate the le severed leg. Thank you. 
Uh, hey, Samora, are you throwing people out? You sure are. He's young, are you on corpse disposal? Not yet, huh? Dying. Alright, whatever. We're just gonna go. Why waste the time? We'll have the adventure and see what happens. My- the- the most fun I have in this game is when I'm struggling the hardest. The awful things this game throws at you is what makes it great, and it really seems to meet or exceed your effort. <laughs> As you make an effort to do something, this game will counter your effort to stop you from being able to do such a thing. Better make sure we got some expendable cats for bribes before we get too cozy here in the canyons. Yeah, we know that. When we go to hang right there, they will probably try to shake us down for a bit of money. No, don't you- what are you doing? Why are you fighting people? You're fighting a dog. A lone dog? Alright. Have at it, guys. More than one dog? No, just one dog. Ooh, that dog is getting taken to town. How's it doing? Not great. A white wolf. Oh, well, we do need your fur. Oh, looks like those guys are beelining for the base, but we'll have to see what happens with that. I mean, this is the whole point. Can we leave them alone? Are they well outfitted enough to be left alone? And I'd like to think the answer is yes. And I'd like to not close the gates. I'd like for people to actually walk through. We'll get more people. So that's one of the things we'll do is we'll, um... I'll probably be looking to more actively recruit now. Uh, what is this? Starving vagrant ex-slave crippled that I can talk to. Well, let's go talk. As I have said many times, the team is empathetic to those in need, and this person, oh boy, <laughs> it's really in need. Uh, nothing. Would you like to join up with us? We have plenty to eat. Uh, hang about? You want to give me a job? I need the money and a good meal. The money, God damn it! Bugger it, why not? What's the worst that could happen? 2500 bucks? Sure, you're with us. Oh god, you know what? Okay, the answer is gonna be I'm not gonna take people who are named Starving Vagrant, actually. <laughs> I do not feel like coming up with names. We'll call her Valerie. V for Vagrant. You're Valerie. There you go. Done. And we will pick her up and we'll run her back real quick because she's going to die. Normally I would let them uh, find their own way home, but yeah, she's left arm, left leg. She's done for. We'll run her back home. We got those slave traders inbound on the base anyway. We'll see what they do. Might be smarter if we're there. What a weird pathfinding you're taking. Oh, and there's skimmers. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I swear to God, I love this game. <laughs> it's such a fucking disaster. Oh, those skimmers are heading right this way. Okay, hold on. Azagami. Stick close by. We might pick this person up, too, and see if they want to come help us. But if we got a jet because of these skimmers, we're going to run, because this team is not capable of taking on three skimmers. All right. Stop right there. Who's got Valerie? You. Put down. Oh, Valerie, I forgot. You're completely fucked. <laughs> that was why we walked you back. Naganuma. Pick up. And, uh, why don't you run her over to bed? All right. That means back to the plan. Let's see if we can get the team out to hang. As we initially wanted. This is probably for the better anyway, because... It'll probably be closer to daytime when we get there. Ooh, those skimmers are moving about. We shall see if they end up attacking us. Beautiful. Whoa, oh, stop right there. Alright. Gonna need to check the bags before you can enter the city. Outlander, standard anti-drug procedure. Mmm. Okay, go ahead. Looks clean. Move along. Awesome. We did not get shaken down, as they say. Let's head inside. Okay, so the idea was the Traders Guild was like, go talk to somebody and hang, and um, you can pay a one-time fee. So let's see if we can find some... Oh, you know what? Also, we should check if there's ninjas. There is. Shinobi thieves. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, we'll hit everything up in town. Let's start out here. Oh, Traders Guild Headquarters. Well, I would imagine it's that. Can't imagine a better place to try first than, uh, 
Traders Guild headquarters. I guess let's go in. Oh man, I really feel like this is like a 50-50 shot on just being truthful. <laughs> like, yeah, you could give him a fee. Or being like, yes, all you need to do is fucking <laughs> become our slave forever. Or right this way, step into these cages. That's where you make payment. Hmm. This does not seem like the best place to be talking to somebody. Let's go up here and see what happens if we get yelled at for going up here. We shall see. No one said anything yet, so that's not so bad. Alright guys, don't mind us, we're just going upstairs. Can I help you, sir? Fetch my bottle, won't you, pup? I need a drink. Longin Diplomatic status. And Yamdu. Can I help you, sir? I guess we'll start with the guy saying, can I help you, sir? Here we go. Oh, boy. Oh, don't, don't, stop bumping into people. Sir, Yamdu says. Uh, who are you? Noble Squire Supreme Yamdu. Nice to meet you, sir. We handle Master Longin's business. Is there anything I can help you with, sir? I mean, is it an alliance? You're the trade... Trade... Master, guild, whatever. Noble Squire Supreme. Alright, let's see what he says. I want to make an alliance. Oh, but that's easy, sir. Lifetime membership to the Trader's Guild. Perfect. That's a like hundred thousand cats. Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> right. Oh, but that's easy, sir. Lifetime membership to the Trader's Guild costs one hundred thousand cats. Unless you have a trading post in the area. Do you have a trading post, sir? Yes, I do have an outpost. Oh, God, it's going to go up. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, good, sir. You get a discount. 75,000 cats. That's not much better. So what does my membership get me? Oh, so many things, sir. Free trade, protection, slave exemption, and class. <laughs> and class, of course. It is the desert man's dream to one day become a member of the Fine Traders Guild. All right, well, I can't afford that right now. Please don't arrest me for it. All right, no problem. You know where to find us. That's good. Safe travel, sir. All right, let's find out. Let's talk to this dude. Oh, that's Longin. Ah, the finest blood room, and it looks like I have guests. Lucky I'm feeling charitable. Have a drop. Don't mind if I do. He pours a shot. Do you know what's on my mind, countryman? Enlighten me. Tinfist. Tinfist and his ninjas. He plagues our guild, sabotages our order, sets our slaves loose, uh, industry and harvest aside. Do you know what happens to the escaped slaves, countryman? Uh, no idea. See the corpses that litter their paths? They terrorize drifters, nomads, merchants. They become yet another threat to stave off in the outlands. A feral will always be a feral. Jeez Louise, man. <laughs> for themselves and for others, the best solution for taming a wild animal is to leash it. Jeez Louise. What a terrible guy. Uh, but Tin Fist, ever the madman, unleashes these ferals on the innocent. I will say nothing to that. He will say nothing to that. Not much of a guest, are you, countryman? All right, well, I'm not going to offer to kill somebody I don't know. I don't know what a Tin Fist is. I'm going to go sit in your chair. That's going to get me in trouble. We're not going to sit in his chair. I want to, but we're going to resist the temptation. Alright guys, we'll be back when we got 75,000 goddamn cats. I need like, I'm gonna need 100,000 total so I have enough to pay people. What else we got in this town? Weapon shop, ooh. This is the other thing I want to do. Let's go, we're gonna go right into here. We're also at a point where we need, um, more advanced research supplies. Uh, cause I'd like to be able to make skeleton repair beds and things like that and you need, um, some more advanced pieces. Who are you and what do you do? Why are you just standing outside? See anything you like. Yeah, so... Uh, it's not these places. It's the one... It's like the... Oh, the skeleton repair places, I think, sometimes will sell the research. You can also find it in places that are a bit dangerous. You know, maybe we'll get to that, but... Ooh, Vivi. Let's talk to Vivi first. The 101. That's from a mod I have. Alright, Vivi. Vivi hums a tune, then quietly sings a song. And, if it's not enough... Get Vivi's attention. Hi. Hey. Do you need something? Haven't seen you around before. Might you be one of the 101? Yes, and I'm ready to go. Shall we? Sure. All right. What do you look like? Crazy. All right, Vivi. You're on the team. My God, look at you. You're a mess. Let me guess. You're way over encumbered. <laughs> Vivi. You are way over encumbered. You're not here for the drink, then I'm guessing you're here for hire. Am I right? I'm here for recruits. Well, my specialty is shooting. Give me a turret any day. Fighting with swords and bloodied hands is for animals. My fee is 6,000 cats. Maybe another time. You're a little too expensive. All right. 
eventually I'm sure we will be uh, picking up people like that, but we need to save 75,000 plus cats, so. Oh my god, there's so many bark bubbles. The lights in this goddamn bar are starting to make my head spin. Work here is dried up big time. How about you? You hiring? Sure, how much? I'm pretty desperate, so 3,000 cats. Alright, fine, Emmett. You can come. 3,000 cats. Done. You're with us. Let's go. Uh, that's about all we can spend in this town, so let's get the hell out of this bar. And, uh, oh yeah, we're gonna go to the ninjas, and then we're gonna leave. To the ninjas. What is this? Oh, shit, yes! Uh, fuck, it's so expensive. I don't care, I wanna learn how to make those, because that's our uniform, so. Done. Man, Sawayashiki's got some gorgeous hair, I did not know that. <laughs> Took off his, uh, taggle must, and he has this, uh, long flowing mane. Who is this? A starving vagrant who is hungry. Let's go have a conversation. See if we can convince them to... ...to join us. Or we'll give them 50 bucks and they can move along. But it's always nice if there's an opportunity to have them join. Why starve in the desert? Food, all we want is food. Uh, yeah, we literally did scout some slave, uh, hunters. You should stay alert. You're the one who should- would be wise to stay alert. I feel like we got that last time. I guess I'll know next time. Well. I am most certainly not the one who needs to stay alert, so. You god danged fools. Oh, here Amatsu took a hit. Oh, Labor's getting attacked. By who? Manhunters. Hmm. Well. Let's get the, uh, defense team up here. And let's see what happens. Now we're fighting on two fronts. Looks like Scout is done, though. Alright, Akino and Nakoka. You guys run and hide. Go be safe. Everybody else, just keep on fighting. This is why we did this. This is good. You guys take off your jobs and hang here for a second. Because instead, we will absolutely loot these bodies. Alright, they did a good job. Nice. That was exactly what was expected. Be able to defend yourself. Ooh, there's a... Fight brewing out here. Who is it? Western Hive versus United Heroes League. What is this? Are you gonna pick this person up? Hold on. Attack the city at Unprovoked. This guy that decided to come and attack our base. There. Oh shit! Uh-oh. Oh, and we're dragging him right in here. Oh, no. All right. Well. <laughs> no, 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 Waki, what are you doing? Waki, why don't you uh, come on back in here? Ah, fuck it. Go ahead, Waki. Everybody go attack. Oh, jeez. All right, good job. <laughs> That's you on full sprint, huh, Hamid? <laughs> Might load you up with some rocks and put you on, uh... That guard patrol instead. You know, actually, I think we will do that. Where are you going? Dead man hunter. Nice. Good job. God damn, man, you guys are doing such a good job. I am loving seeing this. Alright, let's see if we can build this wall without messing this up. I have a feeling I might end up messing this up, but let's <laughs> let's see what happens. Alright. We've expanded the uh, walls out a bit to be more in line with the road. And there we're nice and squared off to the road. I dig it. I don't want to pull the scout team out while this is uh, happening. This is probably their most vulnerable moment as um, all these various people just kind of 
mill about. We'll see. Uh-oh, more fighting. Is it the outlaw farmers who were just passing through? Seems like. Oh no, maybe not. Looks like it might have been the enslaved farmers. Probably one of these guys getting up. Alright. Alright, beautiful. Last wall. Is it? Are we enclosed? Oh, that's why she couldn't throw out intruders. There wasn't an enclosure. There was no one intruding. We were wide open. Now let's see what Hisamura does. There, yep, there you go. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Hisamura. Toshiki is fighting again. And Hisamura is already ready to throw someone out. I love it. Oh my god, guys, fantastic. Nikoki, you crank out some assassin's rags. That's awesome. Oh, I'm happy to see that. Beautiful. Can we queue that up? Make two of those? Sure. Oh, and ninja masks we can make? Oh, we basically can make the outfit. We gotta figure out how to make drifters leather pants and then we're done. Then we can li literally make the full uniform for the team. Alright, I think that's a good spot to leave it. We had uh, quite a day for these guys. The, um, the security and operations team did uh, have a few opportunities to prove themselves and show that they could indeed handle defending the base, at least from the couple of interlopers that we did see. Got attacked a couple of times and they managed to hold their own. And as expected or as hoped, uh, nobody got so badly hurt that it was completely detrimental. Just a couple of bruises and then people go lay down and patch themselves up. And... We also got to put a couple of new people on the team, which is good. Uh, Valerie. Oh, nice. Valerie is doing much better. And hopefully she'll... God, look at that arm. That's hilarious. Hopefully she'll be up and running by the next episode. I think in the next episode, since we have... Yeah, since we start to, we're starting to have some pretty good stores of uh, materials we've been mining, I think I'll start the process while we have those reserves of dismantling a lot of this stuff um, and shuffling over to this temporary building as I'll probably make this wall the main entrance to what ultimately will be the more secure area of the base, where we'll put all of our industry and our farming and all of our crafting and whatnot. But we will take a look at that in the next episode, so subscribe for more Kenshi, and I'll see you next time.